all right what's up guys urban wax Jackie here we're gonna start another video and uh, this video is basically gonna talk to people about how to use their double boiler uh, what temperatures to melt their wax to <clears throat> when to add fragrances when to add their dyes the cooling temperature that you need to pour at for a better finish and some other things that we're going to throw in there as we go along so the first thing that we're going to talk about is your double boiler now i do my stuff out in my shed so i have my own little burner out here uh, and it has a control knob on the side here if you look at the side you can see the control knob where i can turn it on or off uh, it's a basic double boiler um, what you do and the pot that you met your met melt your wax in uh, actually doesn't matter you can use like I use this for my water pot and I use this for my wax pot because the handles match up and when you put the water in there it helps hold the pot so when we're getting ready to set up our, our double boiler and all that kind of stuff basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna put about two to three inches of water in the bottom of the pot here uh, the reason we do that is because we don't want direct contact with the coils here because that will scorch the wax right away uh, and i recommend that you kind of preheat before you pour so if you're going to go like uh, if we're going to do um soy wax or something like that we're going to heat our soy wax up to 180 185 degrees <clears throat> you can kind of preheat and check it with your thermometer here see where it's at and then you can start as the heat's coming up then you can put your second pot in start your double boil and do your wax melt uh, this pot is really important because it's taking most of the heat this pot is not as important because we can use this copper pot like this here or like you get with most of the kits you can use the the pour pot it fits right inside there floats around the only bad thing about the pour pots is whether well, they float around like this and sometimes they tend to tip over which is why i like to use a second pot so that the and like i was showing you earlier i don't know if you can see it very well or not i'll move it over a little bit so you can see it when i set it in here these handles match up so it, it'll boil in there and boil down the wax melt down the wax and then the handles will hold each other so that the pot doesn't move around you can also use just a regular old tin can you can take your tin can you can put it in the center there and melt down your wax that way as well that's a little bit about the double boiler uh, double boilers are pretty basic a lot of people do it for fondue chocolate stuff like that put this back over here real quick some of the big things that i'm going to talk to you guys about are the really important ones and i actually wrote everything down to make sure that i get it all right for you guys Uh, thermometers I have three different types of thermometers here I don't know if you guys can see color indicating thermometer tells you where about where your temperature is this is my favorite one to use because it's a big number thermometer and it's real simple for me to see you can see the big numbers in there And then this one is Fahrenheit and Celsius for those that are using doing Celsius stuff as well. Uh, I like to use the two, the color indicating one and the big number one. Uh, if I'm just doing small pours, I'll just use the only the one big number indicating one because it's easy for me to see and, and tell where the temperature is at. 
<clears throat> um, it doesn't really matter which kind you use. Uh, I have three because uh, sometimes I'll be pouring large pours of wax. So I'll have two thermometers going in two different pour pots at a time. And I like to have a third one just to make sure that uh, I have one in case one something happens to one, whatever. Uh, I've never had anything happen to one, but who knows, just in case. So that's a little bit about the thermometers. Um, thermometers. Thermometers are really simple to use, but the big there's one big thing that you have to worry about with thermometers. If you took if you put the thermometer in all the way and it touches the bottom, you're not getting the correct reading. You're getting the the reading of the heat that's being transferred to the can. You're not getting the heat that's actually your what your wax is. So this little piece that they have here on the side, this little clip here, is designed so that you can take your pour pot or whatever you're using, slip it over there, and then slip your thermometer up and turn it. And if you guys can see in there, so it's not touching the bottom. And you get a good uh, measure on your wax with your thermometer. You never want the bottom of your thermometer to touch the bottom of your, your pour pot. Whatever your pour pot may be, you never want the bottom of the wax, or you never want the thermometer to touch the bottom of the pot. Because you get an inaccurate reading and you'll end up either undercooking or overcooking your wax. All right, so we talked about the, the double boiler and we talked about the um, thermometers and we talked about making sure we put water in there and we talked about the pour pots. All right, so let's jump into a little bit of wax stuff. So some of these temperatures that I'm gonna give you and uh, a lot of this stuff is, uh, and I'll let you know where it's gonna be at, <clears throat> specific to the type of wax that you're using. Now, I looked at four different types of wax that I use, which is soy, palm, beeswax, and paraffin. And I went and looked specifically for the uh, temperatures and the things that can be done with it, uh, why it's good, why it's bad, uh, all that, di that different kind of stuff. So, for soy wax... Is it soy wax is one of the ones that's best for holding scent. Um, so if you here's an example of the soy wax. There's all different ways you can get it. You can get it in a two pound bag like this right here. You can get it in a five pound bag. You can get it in a ten pound bag. Uh, my nephew just found it in fifty pound bags, uh, which we're getting a couple of fifty pound bags because we're going to be pouring a whole bunch of candles. We're uh, we're going to be starting our own business with candles and woodworking. And we're going to see if we can make it go. So soy wax here uh, is <clears throat> needs to be heated up to 180 to 185 degrees. That's the best temp for adding your scents. And we talked about scents in the last one. So here's a here's an example of the scent. And the reason why 180 to 185 is the best temperature is because this allows the scent which we have here to bond to the wax which we have here and give you a longer and stronger smelling candle or what they call scent throw and <clears throat> um, that way when if you do it this way the way that I'm, sh I'm talking to you about and a lot of people have done it before me so I mean you can go and research it for yourself as well if you do it this way you don't have your candle sitting there sweating off all of your scent so you have a no sweat uh, no scent candle uh, which would be kind of a bummer um, this bonds really well to the soy wax and you have a good pour and your candles are what you want them to be so for soy wax like I said we're going to Pour, uh, we're going to uh, heat it up to 185, 180 to 185. Uh, when we get done with that, 
and we've added whatever scent or whatever colors we're going to use. And uh, what I recommend, it's up to you guys, you can do whatever you want. I just go over to the dollar store and I buy me a box of crayons. If you're going to color your candles, it works perfect. You pick out whatever color you want. You break a small piece off. You throw it in there. If it's the color you like, great. If it, you want it a little bit darker, you break off another little piece and you throw it in there until you get the color that you desire. Works amazing and it's super cheap to do it that way. There are other ways to do it. and uh, This is another way to do it. I'll pull it out of the bag here. These are die blocks. And you peel it up, you break a small chunk off. You do it basically the same way that you would with a candle. But you spend, I don't know, six, seven bucks for these die blocks when you can go down and buy a big box of crayons at the dollar store for a buck fifty and do the same thing. The only way that I see these being super beneficial is if you're doing super large candle pours where you need to have a lot of dye because th these are concentrated. Uh, that's when that's when these become beneficial and that's why I have these. I'm trying to remember what this is. This is another citrus scent. Sage and citrus. I didn't even realize that was in there. That shouldn't be in there. Hmm. All right. So we've talked a little bit about the double boiler. We've talked a little bit about um, when to add your dyes and your fragrances. Now uh, I'm going to kind of go over the waxes and the different things that the waxes will do for you uh, as far as uh, choosing a type of wax. So like we were talking about, soy wax, we're going to heat it up to 180, 180 to 185 degrees. It's the best time to add uh, our scents, and it's also the best time to add our dyes due to the adhesion of the scent to the wax. <clears throat> we're going to pour our wax after we heat it up and we get everything added we're going to pour our wax at 120 to 135 now the reason we're going to do this is we let it cool off a little bit we get a better finish when we make our pour so we cool it down a little bit we pour it into our mold we set it we let it go for overnight and we come back out and look we're going to have 120 is where we'll have our best finish for soy wax if now you got to be careful and you got to watch it and sometimes it'll cool off while it's cooling off uh, you may get what they call clouding uh, and clouding tells you that you've let your wax cool off a little bit too much and you might need to heat it back up again so that uh, you can do your pour um, it doesn't take a whole lot to heat it back up you just kind of set it back in your hot water let it get back up to 120 130 somewhere in there and then you go back to doing your pour. So the soy wax is good for smaller candles. It's good for what they call melts and squares. I have a couple examples of melts and squares here. So this would be like a tea light melt. just a little tea light that you put in something like this right here you light it and uh, it'll throw fragrance within your room it, it'll cover about a room now all of you or most of you anyway have, have at one point probably owned a Scentsy or had somebody knew somebody who owned a Scentsy uh, they have the molds so that you can make what your own squares basically what it is is just a square of wax just like you would put in uh, a Scentsy it's just a square of wax you drop it 
I seen one of the coolest ones I've ever seen in a long time. It was a made out of wrought iron, and it had a glass, a bigger glass plate than this, but it had a glass plate that set up on the top. So if you can imagine it sitting up on top of the wrought iron like this right here. And then down below, it had another little glass plate, about the size of the one that I have here, and had a tea light, and the heat from the tea light made the Scentsy go off. I thought that was just the coolest thing I've ever seen in a long time, but I don't know. Maybe you guys can make some comments and, and uh, let me know what you think about that kind of stuff. Or maybe you could let me know uh, where I can get something like that because I would love to get a couple of those and uh, show them in here as well. Because I think that's just the coolest thing that I've seen in a long time. Mm, they smell so good. So I don't really have any examples of paraffin wax, but we are going to talk about paraffin wax because paraffin wax is actually I do I have a very big example. <clears throat> Give me just one second. I need to flip pages here. All right, so paraffin wax, and I'll give you an example of a candle that uses paraffin wax. This candle has been around for, according to my wife's grandmother, it's been around for about 100 years. And it's never been burnt as a paraffin wax candle. I almost hate the idea of melting it down, but my wife wants me to melt it down for a different candle. But I think it's really cool because just of all the different stuff. Now, these are sand cast candles. So there's designs in the sand. And they pour the wax right into the sand. And this is the end result. Pretty cool. Really dig them. And you can tell it's been, it's been beaten. It's been, it's been around the block a few times. All right, so paraffin wax, we're pretty much going to do the same thing, 180 degrees. Uh, when we get to 180 degrees, we can, that's where we can add our fragrance and we can add our, our dyes. Should we decide to do that? Um, there's a difference with paraffin wax that there isn't with soy wax. Uh, when you're using soy wax, you can, if you're pouring into glass... So you're going to pour into glass jars or you're going to pour into something like that. You can preheat the jars before you pour the wax in there to help get better uh, adhesion to the side and help prevent tumbling because it, the wax actually stays out. And when it expands, you, you get a better, um, what's the word? You would get you would get a better adhesion to the side of the glass and, and it makes the candle better uh, for lack of a better way to say it it works so for paraffin uh, it's a little different you have you need to heat if you're pouring into glass you need to heat the glass to 125 so that the paraffin will stick to it better um, if you're just going to use paraffin, which I've not seen a whole lot of paraffin candles done for scenting because they don't do scent loading very well. And I'm going to talk about fragrance load and scent load here in a little bit. Um, most of the stuff that I've seen has been some kind of large form of cylinder candle, something like this. Um... So a cylinder candle like this here or that big candle that I showed you earlier that's uh, the reason they use the paraffin is because it stands up and it's really strong and you don't get um, when you have heating during the day or if your house gets warm or wherever you have it gets warm uh, paraffin tends to sweat uh, and you don't want it to sweat off whatever you put in there color or 
uh, scent. So we talked about preheating the glass so we get good side adhesion. We talked about heating it to 180 degrees. Um, we pour at the same temperature as we heat it to to add our scent and <clears throat> our dyes to get our best finish. So when we, we're going to pour at a temperature of 180 degrees. Now, uh, as I go through these waxes, you're going to hear heat to this and pour at this. The reason I'm telling you heat to this and pour to this is because when we heat it to this temperature, that's the best molecular adhesion of the scent and dye to the wax. And I tell you to pour at a lower temperature, that's the best finish for that wax so you get a, a cleaner looking candle. So palm wax. Let me grab a bag of palm wax real quick. I'll give you an idea of what we're talking about. Palm wax. Just like you're thinking, it's made from palm trees, it's made from palm oil. Um, this is pretty good at, at holding scent as well. Uh, not really a strong wax, not something you would build a big candle out of, but a smaller candle, a tea light, uh, something you just want to throw scent in the room would be really good. Uh, for palm wax, we're going to heat that 170 to 180. And between 170 and 180 is the best time to add our fragrance and to add our dyes if we're going to dye the candle. And we're going to pour between 150 and 160 so we get our best finish with the palm wax. So we'll go ahead and we'll put this back up again real quick. So now one of the ones that I really, really, really want to get into is beeswax. Beeswax is really expensive though. You have to be really careful with it. Um, beeswax has a super high flash point and it will actually catch on fire when you're heating it up and burn itself. So you have to be super careful with it. Um, but it has a lot of healing properties when burnt in the house. Uh, if you use a 60% cotton, uh, cotton wick with it, so that you're not throwing anything uh, bad into the air. Uh, some of the problems of, with the waxes that I've been talking about, like paraffin, paraffin's uh, a chemical, uh, chemical wax, and it throws chemical, um, not chemical vapors, but a chemical, it can, it can burn and leave bad stuff in the air for you. Not trying to be all technical and all that. Um, they used to have wicks that had lead cores. Uh, they've since changed wicks because the lead and the paraffin uh, left some really bad vapors in the air. And it could actually make you really sick by burning the candles. So they changed from lead to zinc. And then they went from zinc to 60% cotton. Uh, the problem was the wick wouldn't stand up or would burn too fast. So... Uh, I would recommend 60% cotton wicks or a wick with a zinc center because that's going to give you the best burn and the cleanest burn. So beeswax, we have to make sure that we heat it really slow. Um, the flash point is 400 degrees on it. And if you don't know what flash point is, basically um, as it's heating up and it's giving off the vapors in the can, 
it can actually catch itself on fire because the flash point is so low so your burner down below if it comes up out of the can and settles because it's going to settle and hits your burner it can catch itself on fire and make a make a really big mess but we're going to heat beeswax slow to 145 to 150. now there's another way that you can do it and it's really really cool way of doing it uh, that i found on the internet it's called a solar oven and basically what they do is they take a, a styrofoam ice chest a small one and they line it with tin foil and then they take a bowl of beeswax and they put it down in the styrofoam ice chest put a piece of glass over the top and then set it outside and let the sun melt it for them uh, if you wanted to be do a total green thing where you're not using no energy or nothing like that that would be a great way to do it I just thought that was the coolest thing in the world I'm gonna try that and I will probably do a GoPro and see how it works <coughs> All right, so once you heat your beeswax 145 to 150, you can pour at the same temperature and still get a good finish with your with your beeswax. Uh, the neat thing about beeswax is it uh, ionizes the air, so purifying the air, electrons, neutrons, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it will actually purify the air if you burn beeswax in your house. One of the bad things about beeswax. Uh, it's not it doesn't really take a scent only because the honey that used to be in the beeswax uh, kind of gives it its own unique flavor and the um, the color you can't really change the color now you can change the color from if you add like a blue to the orange yellow that beeswax comes you can turn it into like a light green or if you if you're actually looking at a color chart and see what you can add to the orange yellow there to change it kind of uh, to the colors that you want you can do this but uh, it comes out very very light so you have to add a lot of color to make it work or this is what I've read so far um, leave a comment let me know see what tell me what you think so that we can uh, so that I can get better at this too because I want to start messing with beeswax and I just haven't done it yet um, that kind of covers all the waxes that I use. Uh, I didn't show you paraffin wax, but I'll show you. I have a big block of paraffin wax in here. So this is paraffin wax here you can buy it in bulk blocks like this uh, you can buy it in smaller blocks um, either way I would recommend if you don't have it Michaels or Hobby Lobby or something like that super cheap it's called a wax knife you just take it put it where you want it push down you can cut off a chunk you can measure out your weight melt it down and call it good and it cuts through pretty simple But this is really about the only thing that you would use a wax knife for is for the paraffin because everything else either comes chipped or uh, pre-done so you really don't have to worry about that So one last thing that I'm going to talk to you about before we get into fragrance loading and some, some measurements and stuff like that. I've showed you guys this in a couple different videos and I love these things. So these are oil candles, floating oil candles. So basically what you do is you cut a piece of plastic, you poke a hole in it, you take the wick, you put it in there. You fill a glass up. Let's see, this is our glass right here. You fill a glass up with water about three quarters of the way maybe a little more and then once you fill that glass up with water you pour a small amount of oil up on top you take your little plastic piece with your wick in it 
you drop it and it makes a candle it's a survival candle it's actually really cool when the power goes out during winter time whatever you can actually heat a room with it really cool candle one of the fun things you can do with this the water that you put under the oil you can actually use food coloring and color it red green blue whatever you want to color it or you can mix your colors up and, and mix make color whatever colors you want when you color it and you light the candle it throws light off through there and you get a blue hue or a green hue or so it turns it in into even a funner candle and you can you can use that anywhere in the house the nice thing uh if it does get knocked over um once the oil is away from the light then it just goes out and there's no there's no worries about it but they're actually really cool candle kits that you can pick up and we're going to do a few of them on future videos uh, once we get once we get a little bit farther into this okay so a big one that was really hard for me to get my head wrapped around it's called fragrance loading so the actual definition of fragrance loading is the manufacturer's recommended maximum amount of fragrance that a wax can retain so some waxes and supposedly somewhere on the bag here it tells you what the wax load of your wax is but I have yet to be able to find one that has the actual wax load but there are some easy measurements that you can go through to help you do your wax loading uh, so that you get your fragrance to wax fragrance load in your wax the correct way uh, and you have a good smelling candle that lasts a long time um, the goal when you're trying to do your wax load is six to ten percent of the fragrance load so to make this simple if you have one pound of wax now this is a two pound bag of wax here if you have one pound of wax it takes one ounce of fragrance is the max load that puts you at the six to ten percent so if you're going to pour, let's say you're going to pour four six ounce, can, six ounce candles. And it takes me into my next thing. Just because you have one pound of wax doesn't mean you have 16 ounces of wax when you melt it down. 16 ounces of wax actually melts down to 24 ounces of of liquid wax 16 16 ounces of hard wax or one pound of wax actually melts down to 24 ounces of liquid wax so you have to plan for that some of these things I had to learn the hard way because you, you know guys man we just kind of jump into stuff and do whatever we think we can do when you are doing your fragrance loading try and work with one pound or less and one ounce or less until you kind of get it worked out then you can go up into stuff bigger if you're doing bigger and more but the the common measurement is one ounce of fragrance so one ounce of lavender to one pound of wax So half the contents of this bag and one ounce of lavender would give you your four six ounce candles does that make sense it didn't to me in the beginning hopefully you guys can leave some comments uh, and let me know how you did it how you worked your math um, what I did was go I uh, looked at a bunch of different people I had to sit down and work out the math myself and make it simple and uh, the simplest way to put it is one ounce to one pound 24 ounces six uh, four six ounce candles 
Pretty simple math. Again, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the cotton wicks. Make sure that you're using cotton wicks, and you got to be careful because there are some wicks out there that have lead in them. Uh, when you burn the lead, it puts bad vapors into the air, can cause issues. Uh, pretty much covered everything. Um, we covered the, the double burner. We covered the pour pots. We covered when we're supposed to add our fragrance. We covered when we're supposed to add our dyes and uh, how to get our dyes and what to do with our dyes. Um, we talked about thermometers. Yeah, I think that pretty much brings us to the end, guys. Oh, some of the cool things that you can do, too. You can go on the Internet uh, while, while I got this sitting right here. Um, I don't know if you can see it very well, but different things that you can boil down and add to your candles like Western red cedar. So we have a, uh, two red cedars out in front of ours. You can boil it down and you can add the cedar oil right out for your tree in your front yard to your candles and make a cedar candle. And there's all kinds of different stuff that I printed out. But yeah, that pretty much covers everything guys. Um, please like and subscribe. Please make sure and leave some kind of comments because uh, they they help me with the videos and they help me to make sure that I'm putting out good content and good information. Please, uh, yeah, just just please enjoy the video. Um, if you have good comments, uh, please make sure and leave those. If you just have troll comments, uh, please don't waste your time or mine. Uh, not really trying to do this to be a professional or anything just to help people get started and, and kind of do this but thank you so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, again like share or like and subscribe and uh i'll keep putting out more videos as long as you guys keep asking for them hope you guys have a great day hope your candle making goes well and we'll see you in the next video